Tonight, Labour Party unveils Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed as vice presidential candidate to Peter Obi. Party promises a new approach to governance. Three APC governors, Fayemi Sawolu and Akeridulu, meet Governor Yesam Wike in Port Harcourt. Governor Fayemi says, We are one family. A surprise attack, that's the expression of the president as he is briefed by service chiefs on the raid at the Kujay Correctional Center. He also warns the officers to ensure that such never happens again. An unending gridlock on the Lagos Sibada Expressway now compounded by last minute ground purchase at the car market ahead of Salah. And on business news tonight, global food commodity prices fall for the third consecutive month in June. According to latest food price index report released by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. And from Abuja, one million pilgrims, including 43,000 Nigerians, converge on Mount Arafat for prayers, marking the climax of the annual Muslim pilgrimage in Mecca. And in international news from London, leaders across the world have been reacting with shock and sadness to the news that the former Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, has been shot dead at a campaign rally. It's now official. After week-long speculations about who becomes the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Dr. Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed has been unveiled as a running mate to Mr. Peter Obi. Speaking during a press conference after the unveiling, Dr. Dati Baba Ahmed, who is an economist and founder of Bayes University Abuja, promised to bring his background as an educationist into play as vice president and bring an end to incessant university strikes, amongst other things. Our correspondent Kayla Megua reports. It is now official. Senator Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed is the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party. His unveiling was a well-attended event in Abuja, the nation's capital, by Labour Party leaders, his friends and associates in academics. The undeniable, unchallengeable, fundamental reason for being on this ticket is to rescue Nigeria. And it goes logically and without saying that you can only rescue that which is in trouble. Nigeria is in a great deal of trouble. I cannot afford not to be part of the movement to rescue Nigeria. At a press conference after the unveiling, Dr. Dati Baba Ahmed speaks on what he's bringing to the table if elected vice president. Almost assure you 100% that you will not see uh, our universities going on strike. That is a high crime. And we will do everything possible. And we will go the extra miles to ensure that Mr. President will never allow this to happen for as long as he and I. And it, it, I cannot sleep with universities being on strike. It doesn't add up. The party's presidential candidate had earlier stated that in coming days, the party's manifesto will be released and said it will be anchored on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. Fielding questions from journalists, Mr. Peter will be answers questions raised on his ability to win the upcoming elections, questions raised by the Anambra State Governor, Mr. Charles Saludo, in recent days. He also declares that the Labour Party presidency will not be focused on probing past administrations. You can't close your shop and be chasing teeth. Those who look yesterday and today will miss tomorrow. God did not give us eye at the back. Who this with some of those issues at the back? I am not going to be party or part of any form of victimization or witch hunt or anything. It will never happen. Soludo is a friend, is a brother. If I can pay and the people of Anambra State said, I don't have a chance, they will determine that is 2023 issue. But I assure you that we are campaigning. We're offering ourselves, and I'm sure he will vote for me. 
Mr. Peter Obi and his running mate have their work cut out for them to build the structures necessary to win an election in Nigeria while staying true to their party's tenets and promises. Dr. Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed was born in Zaria and a one-time senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A graduate of the University of Maiduguri, he also has a master's degree in business administration from the University of Wales and a PhD from the University of Westminster. He is a banker and an educationist. Kayla Megwa, Channels Television News. Staying with the unveiling, Dr. Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, alongside the presidential flag bearer, Mr. Peter Obi, also took the opportunity to address several burning national issues, beginning with insecurity. What we intend to do about security, the only thing I can tell you is that you will see a decisive step for securing Nigeria. And I've said the general terms. The more you pull people out of poverty, the more you reduce criminality. It's been tested everywhere in the world. From Mesa, and I give examples of countries. Go to all the Asian countries, go to South American countries, from Brazil to Mexico. The more you Colombia, the more you reduce, pull people out of the more you reduce criminality. I've taken time to go around, interviewed, even kidnappers and arrested and everything. And I have an idea, and we're always discussing what to do. If you liberate Nigerians, leave them to go and make their living, and they'll do it well. So we'll underwrite it by giving that guarantee of sorts that now you can go to anywhere. Go to your farmlands and walk, travel at night and exchange your merchandise. It is key, have it in mind, that we want to give psyche from that fear to the feeling that, yes, now I can travel, I can live in peace. The first thing I need to do is not secure my windows and doors because I don't trust Nigerians. They'll come and attack me at night. When they walk from morning to night, they're already tired. They can't come in the middle of the night, attack you, and steal. And that's exactly what His Excellency is. We want to keep everybody busy from morning to night so that others at night can sleep well. Pulling Nigerians out of poverty was another issue raised by both men. While the VP candidate questioned the borrowing appetite of the current government, the Labour Party flag bearer talked about exploring the opportunity of focusing on textile and garment manufacturing. Bangladesh is today globally the biggest exporter of garments. Globally, they exported last year $36 billion worth of garments. If you go to Bangladesh, 60 to 70 percent of those who are involved in this garment manufacturing for export are women. I've been there. I, everywhere I've said I visited, I was there. I saw, went from one village to the other. So imagine what you would do when you unleash this. And you know, empowering women is empowering a family, is empowering everything. They will care for their husband, they will care for their children, they will care for everything. So it's a critical, when we talk about pulling people out of poverty, we're actually talking about bringing inclusiveness of women in the development agenda. We, we want to finance the return to the farmlands. We want to finance the infrastructure. We, we, you know, the war against insecurity. While we are making efforts to increase our revenue, we think there is more we can get from the past. You will get to realize that in the first two years, what we will recover from the past is going to compete with the world because the, the figures are unbelievable. $90 billion borrowed. We don't see any reasonably completed capital project, and we're still paying those loans. The corruption is unimaginable.
some light-hearted banter as three governors of the old progressives congress apc visited governor yesam wiki of river state at his private residence in port harcourt the visiting governors kaya de Fayemi of ekiti state and chairman of the nigerian governors forum babajide sonwulu of lagos state and rotimia keridulu of ondo state were received on arrival by governor yesam wiki and the former governor of ekiti state ayo Fayoshe, before going into a closed door meeting And more stories now. The Speaker of the Delta State House of Assembly, Sheriff Oborawari, has appealed yesterday's judgment by Federal High Court in Abuja, which disqualified his nomination as the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the state. In a nine-ground notice of appeal, Mr. Oborawari wants the appellate court to set aside the judgment given by Justice Taiwo Taiwo. He also filed a motion and notice before the Federal High Court in Abuja for a stay of execution of the judgment pending the determination of his appeal. Among other things, Mr. Oborewori argues that it is the law that information about a candidate's qualification could only be challenged after the political party sponsoring the candidate submits the name and INEC publishes the name and accompanying affidavit. And on to security. We're getting more revelations about Tuesday night's terrorist attack at the Kujé Custodial Center, with the security authorities now admitting that no one anticipated it, and the security officials there were overwhelmed by the terrorist superior weapons. This was disclosed by the Minister of Police Affairs, Mr. Mohamed Dingyadi, who said the attack came as a surprise to the president. Our state house correspondent, Gloria Mezoke, reports. 72 hours after one of the most brazen attacks ever witnessed in the nation's correctional center since 2015, President Muhammadu Buhari summons what seems like an emergency meeting of the National Security Council at the State House. The number of security attacks, including that of the Kujé Correctional Center, the president's convoy in Katsina, the Shiroro attack in Niger State, among others, in the last two weeks, came under review in the nearly four-hour meeting. The police affairs minister conveys the president's state of mind. Uh, Mr. President is uh, surprised that what happened in Kujé actually took place in spite of all the security arrangements that have been made to ensure that such an incident does not happen. Uh, we are assuring the nation and Nigerians in general that uh, uh, arrangements have been made to ensure that uh, full investigations are carried out and to ensure that uh, a repeat of uh, the instances will not occur. According to him, the security personnel at the Kujé medium prisons, where all 69 Boko Haram detainees escaped, among hundreds of others, were simply overpowered. These kind of things, uh, they happen. And uh, I, I want to assure you that uh, all those who are supposed to play a role in ensuring that the attack is uh, neutralized, did the best that they could to neutralize it. I, I think uh, what helped them was the number of people they came with and uh, the superior weapons they came with. And uh, uh, because nobody anticipated it, the few people who were there guarding the place could not withstand the number that they came with. I think that was what happened. But like I said, uh, this investigation is still going on and uh, you will only do good to allow the investigation to continue 
and maybe by the time they finish, you will be able to get the details of what actually happened and why it happened. That there have been about a dozen attacks on correctional centers across the country in the last six years, the latest of which exposed the weak infrastructure within the prisons. Now, what impact will the current investigation have? How cogent will it be to forestall further occurrence? And what about the outcomes of the previous investigations? Well, these are questions, unanswered questions. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, Vice President Yamio Shimbajo receives Nigerian biker Kunle Adeoju, who embarked on a polio-inspired charity ride from London to Lagos. Well, that's in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, live on channels television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Labour Party unveils Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed as vice presidential candidate. Peter Obi party promises a new approach to governance. Three APC governors, Faimi Sonlu and Akira Dulu, meet Governor Yusuf Wike in Port Harcourt. Governor Faimi says we are one family. President receives briefing from service chiefs on the attack at the Kujie Custodial Center, warns the officers to ensure that such never happens again. And former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe assassinated in a campaign rally in Japan, possible motive revealed. Well, as the nation continues to ponder on the brazen attack at the Kuje Correctional Center, the government today released the names and pictures of 69 inmates with Boko Haram members and terrorism cases who escaped from the custodial center on Tuesday. The Correctional Service in the release asks anyone with useful information that may lead to their recapture to inform any law enforcement agency around. Meanwhile, officials say more names of wanted inmates from the facility will be released in due course. You can get the full list of the escapees on our website, channelstv.com. Away from that, in a build-up to the Eid al Kabir celebrations here in Lagos, it's been a big struggle for travelers plying the lagos Ibadan Expressway. Well, the traffic situation on the highway is a major concern for commuters, even as those traveling and shopping for Salah celebrations have made it more difficult to drive freely on the road. Meanwhile, the Federal Road Safety Corps is given the assurance that it will manage the gridlock. It's been a harrowing 48 hours along the Lagos Ibado Expressway as commuters spend precious time in traffic. The situation in the past one month has been far from pleasant, owing to the renewed construction work on the Otogola to Alausa stretch, now compounded by truckloads of animals coming into Lagos and those trying to shop for Salaram. About three weeks ago, the journey outbound Lagos was smooth, but the story is no longer the same. Now what you see is a surge of vehicles as more people make their way in and out of Lagos, especially for the Salah celebration. The is young. We are managing it. We are managing it. It's because of the land that we are selling and because of the fuel, the scarcity. That's all causing. But all those traffic, they are working. They are trying. Both road safety, both uh, police, all of them, they are working. It's too heavy. For as far as the traffic stretches, the Road Safety Corps says it's trying hard to clear up the backlog. Okay. Situations like this, we always expect traffic to be high. Festival is coming, Salah is around the corner. You expect people to be moving up and down. We want more vehicular movement to carry goods and services. People are going out for Salah break, people are coming in for Salah break. And at this point, you know that this is Kara Market. Kara Market is where people come to buy their uh, ram, goats, and uh, other animals for the festival. 
So these are the cause of uh, the traffic that you are seeing very, very high. Uh, certainly, the high volume of uh, traffic we have now is as a result of movements. It's like a huge exodus of people leaving Lagos and also people coming to Lagos. And definitely, hopefully, before the, even before the end of the festive period, when people will have retired into their various destinations, the traffic will definitely come down. And with a long weekend ahead, commuters plying the Lagos Ibadu Expressway may have to brace up for longer hours that will be spent on the road before they arrive at their final destinations. Meanwhile, residents of the Federal Capital Territory traveling for the Eid al Kabir say they have resorted to prayers following the spate of insecurity and kidnappings on the nation's highway. Besides issues of insecurity, travelers and residents shopping for livestock have also expressed concerns over the increase in transportation fares as well as the cost of rams, which has risen by over 50%. It's another Idil Kabir, and the Jabi Moto Park comes alive once again. <laughs> Residents of the Federal Capital Territory are planning to take advantage of the holiday to spend time with family and friends. As expected, the transport fare has risen by over 50%, not just because of the economic situation, but also because of the perennial fuel situation in the nation's capital. However, the hike in cost is not the only thing on the mind of commuters and motorists. The state of insecurity on the highway is a major concern. Before now, vehicle to Lokoja is about uh, 2,000. It was 1,500, five, then 2,000. It went up to 2,500. Today now, they are saying 3,5. There is no security. So right now, it's only our faith that is keeping us moving. Insecurity, there is insecurity everywhere. People are scared to use their, they use their car to travel this year. And all these big man people, all these private people, they are, they are scared. That's why most of them bring their people to park. Ram plays a significant part in the celebration. Residents turn out in their numbers at the Kubo livestock market in a last-minute effort to get a ram for the celebration. However, the cost is discouraging. The prices of uh, ram gold uh, for this salai is uh, very, very expensive. Very, very expensive compared to previous years. Every ram that we used to buy 70,000 now is around 100,000, 120. The one that we used to buy last year, 90,000. Now they are selling around 150,000. So the cost price is uh, seriously on the high side. Going by the sellers, they are saying that due to the, this insecurity that is happening uh, in the northern part of the country, one, and uh, the second aspect of it is the cost in the diesel. That's the transportation cost. It's also been a factor responsible for that. While residents look forward to celebrating the Idil Kabir with friends and family, they can only hope that issues of insecurity and the hike in food will not dampen the mood of the festivities. Well, staying in Abuja, but this time at our studio where Mark Wilgun Yusuf is standing by with more stories of the news at 10. Hello, Mark Well, hello, Kayode. Indeed, we're staying in tune with the festivities as our first story comes all the way from Saudi Arabia, where standing at Mount Arafat marks the climax of the annual Muslim pilgrimage in Mecca. This year, one million pilgrims drawn from all over the world, including 43,000 Nigerians, converge on Mount Arafat from dawn to dusk to seek God's intervention and mercies. Our correspondent Abubakar Salihu was at the Mount Arafat in the country and now reports. At the first light of dawn, pilgrims begin to converge on Mount Arafat and the surrounding plains, chanting prayers to God. They will remain there till after sunset, despite the souring temperatures of 44 degrees Celsius. However, Saudi Arabian authorities have put in place measures to ensure safety, security, and welfare of pilgrims. In here in Arafat, uh, during in Hajj, we are feeling the much, much uh, good preparations for all over the Saudi government. They well prepare 
uh, for the everything, even the hospitality, this is very, very good for that. Even that the weather is hard, but due to the showers uh, for the water, they, they prepare very well things. So these shower, they maintain the temperatures so the people, they can walk very well. Some of the pilgrims express satisfaction with the good arrangement at Arafat this season. We are, uh, you know, very happy to see the arrangement of the government of uh, Saudi Arabia. They manage everything very well, especially, you know, the ways, especially, you know, hotels, transportation and each and everything. The lessons from the Hajj ride is humility and good virtues. And it is hoped that the pilgrims will go to their respective countries as morally transformed. From Mount Arafat in Saudi Arabia, Abu Bakr Saluhu, Channels Television. Still ahead on the news at 10, global food commodity prices fall for the third consecutive month in June, according to the latest food price index report released by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. That's some business news, plus more Salah stories. Please stay with us. And the visuals you see there, those of President Muhammadu Buhari, who has arrived his hometown, Daura, in Katsina State, to celebrate the Il de Kabir. He landed at the Umar Musa Aridua Airport at about 5.20 p.m., where he was received by the Katsina State Governor, Aminu Masari, in company of his deputy and other senior government officials, heads of security agencies, and other dignitaries. The president received the guard of honor from troops of the 17th Brigade of the Nigerian Army and officers of the 213 Operational Base of the Nigerian Air Force under the Operation Hadarin Daji. After inspecting the guards, he left for Daura on a helicopter at about 5.38 p.m. Meanwhile, the president has asked Nigerians to put the interests of the country above other interests and use religion as a motivation for the love of our common humanity. In his Ilda Kabir message to Nigerian Muslims and other citizens, the president says that if we're putting the teachings of our religions into practice, most of the evils afflicting our society would have been solved. He also says religion shouldn't just be used as a mere badge of identity, but as a motivator for doing good for our country and humanity. He also promised to end current security challenges and improve on the cost of living in the country. In other news, one of Nigeria's foremost automobile brands, CIG Motors, franchise owner of GAC Motors in Nigeria, has made two grand unveilings for the African market. At an event in Lagos, the company officially launched its all-new GS4 series and commissioned the G-Style showroom and workshop, the first on the continent. According to the chairman of CIG Motors, Diana Chen, the company is committed to improving automobile technology in the world as well as give the best car driving experience to users. Customers and car owners are set to have a unique driving experience as CIG Motors, the franchise owners of GAC Motors in Nigeria, makes two grand unveiling. Launch of the all-new GS4 and GAC G-Style showroom and a service workshop. But first, Chief Diana Chen, chairman of CIG Motors, gives details about the new releases at the company's head office in Victoria Island, Lagos. We are happy to announce this uh, GAC Moto G showroom open and the new GS4 launch. The G style showroom launch, it is the very high level representative of the GAC Moto uh, standard in the world. We also launched GS4 before, but this new GS4 is with the new features. That means it uh, represents the world-class technology renovation all the time. Right opposite the head office is the venue for the commissioning, which was performed by Lagos State Governor Babaji De Sanwolu after his tour of the facility. The G-Style showroom and the workshop is the first of its kind on the African continent a landmark achievement for the Chinese brand. It is my duty and job to support China's brand, to support China's industry, and particularly to support China's entrepreneurs like Chief Diana. 
Governor Sawolu restates his commitment to sustaining his partnership with the company. The relationship we have with GSC Moto is not just to buy cars. Very soon we'll be asking you to join us when we're going to unveil the assembly plants in Ikeja, I think before the end of the year. And so we're not just buying the finished products. It's about ensuring that we can create jobs, we can give livelihood to our citizens, and we can transfer technology. Then to the big one. We are happy today to introduce the new GS4. The unveiling of the all-new GS4, signaling its official release into the Nigerian automobile market. Executive passenger, to put it correctly. Oh yeah, that's what it is. And stakeholders in the construction industry believe that investment in high-rise buildings could be a solution to the scarcity and high cost of accommodation in Nigeria's urban centers. And to achieve this, a strong collaboration between policymakers in the private and public sectors will be needed. This is the thrust of deliberations at the fifth edition of Concrete Ideas, a public policy thought leadership series organized by Lafarge Africa PLC in Lagos. It. Participants at the fifth edition of the Lafarge Africa Concrete Ideas series are nothing short of public and private players in the construction and building industry. This time, the dialogue tilts towards solving housing challenge through investment in high-rise buildings. This is mainly to overcome the challenges of urban overpopulation and for the optimal use of scarce land resources. It is, however, a wonder that the concept of vertical cities is not growing at a significant rate compared to the horizontal growth of buildings. Like in many nations, housing, building and construction safety challenges are also faced in Lagos. But how has the state, with a growing population, managed this? Our resolve as a government has been to more intentionally and vocally sensitize our people builders on the importance of seeking the input of professionals in engineering, building, planning and architecture even before embarking on the building of any structure in our state. A panel of discussion offers other speakers the opportunity to share their thoughts on how public-private partnerships can be strengthened to ensure a safe and environmentally sustainable shelter. Even in terms of the substructure, which is something that is responsible for the stability of the building, you need very, very experienced engineers to do that. The event also gives stakeholders the opportunity to tour an exhibition booth where the products and services from Lafarge Africa are displayed. The given series of ideas, things that need to be done. But generally, government is kind of providing an enabling environment. It's the industry like Lafarge and the other partners the real estate people that will make things a reality. We all talk sustainability, we all talk uh, environment, uh, CO2 reduction or emission. So all of these factors is actually what we do every day. These are the uh, research and development, the green products that we are working on. So we are very much aligned on the future and the goals of such a concrete idea event is seeking. Lafarge Africa PLC is a leading sub-Saharan Africa building solutions company and a world leader in building solutions. The company leverages innovative expertise to provide value-added products and services solutions in the building and construction industry in Nigeria. And that's all from Abuja. It's back now to you, Coyote. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. Bear. Nimeth Pharmaceuticals PLC, manufacturers and marketers of a range of Pfizer pharmaceutical products and animal health products in Nigeria, has signed a rights issue of 3.7 billion naira through the Nigerian capital market. The board chairman of uh, Nimeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC, Dr. Ambrosi Ojiako, says the money is being raised to construct a multi-product facility in Amorbia, Anambra State, that will match the World Health Organization standards of good manufacturing practice. Nimeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC is a publicly listed pharmaceutical company founded in 1997 and headquartered in Lingo. 
the company is known for its delivery of high-quality pharmaceutical services to the nation's healthcare sector. The company is now heading to the capital market to raise money from existing shareholders by way of rights issue of 2.4 million new shares at the cost of 1 naira 55 copper per share, which is expected to raise a total of 3.7 billion naira. Proceeds from this rights issue will be utilized to construct a new multi-product facility that will be tailored to comply with the WHO current standards of good manufacturing practices at Amobia in Anambra State. Nimeth says it's well prepared to work with shareholders and capital market professionals to achieve a successful right issue. We are trusting that all of us will work collectively as a team to ensure the success of this uh, exercise. Every effort will be made to ensure that all shareholders are mobilized to take their rights. Between 2020 and 2021, the company's dividends increased by 8%. Managers of Nimeth are confident that rights issue will help restructure the capital base and balance the sheets. This signing ceremony is indeed the beginning of the processes for our fundraise. We are starting with rights issue of having over 2 billion and 400 uh, million shares as rights issue and this will be taken up by existing shareholders. It's going to enable us to take advantage of all growth opportunities available to the company and uh, reduce cost of funding and ensure that we maintain a, a stable financial structure for the company. Nimeth International Pharmaceuticals PLC is optimistic that the rights issue will reduce cost of borrowing and position the company for growth opportunities in Nigeria and West Africa. And one more political story. The governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Kanduje, has invited Muslim clerics from across the states to offer prayers for his administration as well as the nation. Speaking after the event which held at the Kano State Government House, Governor Kanduje, during the prayers, requested that more prayers be offered for the APC presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, to ensure that he becomes Niger's next president. He also defends the idea of a Muslim Muslim ticket. <laughs> Let's shift gears now. It's time for business news with Tenio Lashaboali. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star eight nine four hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thanks a lot, Kaede. Welcome to Business News. Global food prices eased for the third consecutive month in June on alternative sources and improving harvest in some parts of the world. According to the latest food price index report released by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, key wholesale food commodity prices fell by 2.3 percent last month. This comes as the price of cereals and edible oils dropped by 4.6 and 7.6 percent each retreating from the highs prompted by the Russia-Ukraine war, worries about bad weather and the rising cost of production. And to the domestic stock market, which ended Friday's session in the red at the same margin recorded in Thursday's trading session. Uh, Laddie Williams has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Well, it's the same one basis point we saw uh, yesterday, but this time it's to the downside. 
So it's another flat close today with the All Share Index at 51,557 points. Activity chart is mostly red with just value of stocks traded in the green, valued at 1.7 billion naira. Uh, during the session, the energy counter closed marginally up by nine basis points, uh, with share price of Rwanda going up about 0.73%. Also, the banking counter added 0.15% with gains from Zenith Bank, UB, and other tier two uh, banks. But other counters we track are mostly red uh, or, or closing flat. And uh, again today, Academy Press makes it to the top gainers counter, closing at 1 hour 89 Kobo. That stock has had uh, quite a run this season. I guess it's time for the printing sector to get some attention as election uh, season uh, nears at this point. Well, Nigeria Aviation Handling Company uh, led the loser's counter to close at 8 Naira, 62 Kobo. We also see Cornerstone Insurance and Chams on that uh, counter. So positive market breath today with 13 gainers and 12 losing stocks. Was a mix of sell-offs and buy interest with red being the dominating color this week. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Ladi Williams. It's back to you. And that's business news tonight. It's back to Kayode. Well, thank you, Tani. Police investigates in the assassination of Japan's ex-Prime Minister Shinzo Abe say the suspect held a grudge against a specific organization. For more on this and other international stories, here's Simon Pusey with Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Leaders across the world have been reacting with sadness to the news that the former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has been shot dead at a campaign rally. He was campaigning in the western city of Nara for a parliamentary election when the gunman opened fire. The chaos and confusion caught on camera. As the suspect was tackled to the ground and apprehended, a 41-year-old man is now in police custody. Photos showed Mr. Abe lying on the floor, his white shirt stained with blood. He was airlifted to hospital but later died of his wounds. In an emotional TV statement, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said the shooting was an unforgivable act. We cannot accept that this violent act took place during an election, the foundation of democracy. In the strongest terms, I condemn this act. Current and former world leaders have also been paying their respects to Japan's longest ever serving Prime Minister. Boris Johnson said, incredibly sad news about Shinzo Abe. His global leadership through uncharted times will be remembered by many. My thoughts are with his family, friends and the Japanese people. The UK stands with you at this dark and sad time. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron tweeted that Japan has lost a great prime minister, while many other former and current leaders said the same. Anthony Blinken expressed his shock and sadness while on a trip to Indonesia. Very deep condolences of the United States passing on the assassination of the former prime minister. Uh, this is shocking. Uh, it's. Uh, Profoundly disturbing uh, in and of itself. Uh, it's also such a strong personal loss for so many people. For the United States, uh, Prime Minister Abe was an extraordinary partner um, and someone who clearly was a great leader for Japan, uh, for the Japanese people, but also so admired as a local leader and one who really during his time in office brought the relationship between our countries, the United States and Japan, uh, to new heights. Angola's former president, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, who ruled Africa's second biggest oil producer for nearly four decades, has died aged 79. <laughs> the current presidency said the former president had died at 11.10 a.m. following a prolonged illness. Dos Santos had been receiving medical treatment since 2019. One of Africa's longest-serving leaders, Dos Santos, stepped down five years ago. His rule was marked by a brutal civil war lasting nearly three decades against U.S.-backed UNITA rebels. Former FIFA president Sepp Blatter and French soccer legend Michel Platini have both been cleared of corruption charges by a Swiss court after a seven-year investigation. 
A judge said the pair's account of a gentleman's agreement for FIFA to pay Platini two million Swiss francs for consulting work was credible and serious doubts existed about the prosecution's allegation it was a fraudulent payment. As a result, Blatter was cleared of fraud by the Federal Criminal Court. Platini, a former France national team captain and manager, was also acquitted of fraud. Around one million Muslim pilgrims have gathered at Saudi Arabia's Mount Arafat for a vigil to atone for their sins and to pray for peace back home as the annual Hajj pilgrimage nears its climax. Pilgrims clad in white robes climbed the rocky Mount of Mercy, which oversees the plain of Arafat, where the Prophet Muhammad is believed to have held his last sermon. Saudi Arabia has said up to one million pilgrims, mostly from abroad, will attend the Hajj season this year, after two years of disruption caused by COVID. And finally, Fendi has presented light-coloured outfits mixed with shimmery materials as part of its fall-winter 2023 collection on the last day of Paris Fashion Week. Designer Kim Jones mixed pastels and glitter and brought camel suits and dresses with flower patterns in the diverse collection. The British designer was appointed artistic director of Fendi's women's collection in September 2020. While Hort Koitscher accounts for a small proportion of sales for luxury brands, it is a major marketing driver for the industry. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon, and a welcome to Sports News. World Athletics has released the final entry list for the World Athletics Championships in Oregon, confirming that more than 1,900 athletes from 192 teams will be in action at Eugene's Hayward Field from July the 15th to the 24th. Team Nigeria have been listed in the 4x100 meters women's relay, making it official after fears of the nation's absence following the additional one-year ban of blessing or Kagbari. Well, we wish them all the best at the tournament, but that's a wrap on Sports News. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. It's back to Kaede with the wrap of the news at 10. Thanks, Victor. And just before we go, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbaju has hosted Nigerian biker Kunle Adeonju, who embarked on a polio-inspired charity ride from London to Lagos. Professor Oshimbaju, who received Mr. Adeonju at the presidential villa, says there is a need to sustain the campaign against polio. And he's just in. Tesla Chief Executive Officer Elon Musk today said he is terminating his $44 billion deal for Twitter because, according to him, the social media company had failed to provide information about fake accounts on the platform. In a filing, Musk's lawyers said Twitter had failed or refused to respond to multiple requests for information on fake or spam accounts on the platform, which is fundamental to the company's business performance. And the main news again. Labour Party today unveiled Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed as a vice presidential candidate to Peter B. The party promised to adopt a new approach to governance. And that's the news at 10 tonight, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'm Kaido Kikuli. Good night. <laughs>